You got it all figured out now? I figured it out. Wow, proud of you, buddy. Are we allowed to use it? Use what? The uh, video. It's a news thing. Yeah. Like, are you pretty much asking me if I can afford $50 for my grandfather's gift? Because I'm kind of insulted if that's what she's asking. <laughs> Is that your sister? No, it's my mom. Oh. Oh. Mom, I got that podcast money now. <laughs> Don't worry, Ma. I can spare 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways. I got the podcast money. We're good. The podcast money. I got that podcast and money. Oh, I wouldn't let that go to your head just yet. Oh, there ain't no podcast and money. It is all sarcasm, trust me. <laughs> more like, like that podcast debt yeah yeah <laughs> hey everyone i'm brad from calgary this is sean from cambridge ontario i'm terry from cornwall ontario hey this is larry from pit metals british columbia and you're listening to the towing life podcast No one else's opinion matters. Your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter, okay? No one else's opinion matters. I need more buttons. I need more sound clips. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to say more stupid things. Think you can think you can pull that off? I that's all I do is say stupid things. Day in and day. Welcome in. to the Telling Life podcast where the ditches are deep. Sorry. I was practicing. What? I was practicing for Sunday when you're not here. Oh. Welcome to the Towing Life Podcast, where the ditches are deep, the trucks are loaded, but the drives are not. I'm your host, Towman G, and as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, friend, and former co-worker, the man with very strong opinions that might be shown on this show today, Mr. Plain Guy. What is going on, G? What is going on? Well, I Did I miss I... something in the show lineup on why my opinions would be excessively strong today? I don't know. No, okay. it really it really depends on what you uh, feel like on the first topic that we're really going to be diving into today. Fair enough. This coming from the guy who thinks that no one else's opinion matters. Yep. Um <laughs> <laughs> So no, what is going on? I don't know about you, but it has been a week, man. It has been a week. You know those weeks where it's one cluster after another. After another. And it's like, what do we got to do to break this? If it's not a truck broke. Okay, cool. We got that problem solved. Then this comes up. Then five different runs going five different directions hours away and trying to figure out coverage to even myself making a schedule mistake that I don't know how I made <laughs> that almost led to us not having any coverage and not being able to record the show today. So it has just been one of those weeks that it seems like no matter what you do, no matter how good you try and be and how much you just put your head down and try and work, uh, nothing went right. Yeah, yeah. You know, the best way to fix all that is just to close the doors and say, I'm done. That's the easiest way to make all those problems just disappear. I, I sent out a message to my group of guys and I said, look, there's a problem with the schedule. I need some coverage for tonight. Anyone interested? I had a driver respond. What happens if we don't have coverage? Hmm. And I said, we close the doors and we shut down forever. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom, you had someone to cover. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to have a job to return to, um, <laughs> please. But no, no, that's, that's what it comes down to a lot of it, right? Is, is luckily we have a great team. And, you know, I'm a big believer in that there's going to be times where I'm going to ask you to push harder than I'd like to. And, that you know what I mean? You might be doing a little bit crazy. Just know that when I can give you that break and when I can give you that spot, I will. And obviously, when a guy can step up like that, when he when he doesn't have to and cover a shift, it's always uh, it's always much appreciated. Here's the thing that I've learned in all my my years of many wisdom. Mm. Years. I really okay. had the wrong idea getting into, not getting into towing. I Let's be honest, I had the wrong idea getting into towing to start. We all did, yeah. What a terrible idea that yeah, was. It's horrible. Um, but even when it came to the management side of things, you go, this is great. 
I got guys that, you know I mean? If you need something, you get a guy, you know what I mean? You got guys to take care of it. You delegate, you pass on responsibility. You do all that kind of thing. It sounds phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But like you just said, you realize that you become low man on the totem pole. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if nobody is going to do it, who does it fall to? Whose responsibility is that to cover these things if, if coverage isn't there? It's the manager. And if not, it's the owner. And if I pass that responsibility on, you're in trouble. So, you know, you joke about that where, yeah, I'd be low man on the totem pole and I've had to go. No, I'm low man on the totem pole. <laughs> I'd be. That's what I didn't answer to him was that what, what happens if nobody does it? I do it, which yeah. I have no problem doing. Obviously, we had some prior commitments and everything else. But, you know, business comes first. And you, you know that as well as I do. So, you, you know, we suck up and we make this work. If we would have had to record this at... I don't know what we would have done, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> we'll figure that out when the time comes. How about that? So before I go on any more rambling and babbling and buffoonery, um, it is a great time to message. <laughs> great time to message. Great there time to go. mention. All right, English is hard. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns for the show, want to find out any more information, visit us at www.towinglife.ca. Be sure to check into that website. New things are coming. Fancy things are coming. Once we can finally announce the big news, we will announce the big news. For now, just know things are coming. You can email us at thetowinglife at gmail.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at the Towing Life Podcast on Facebook. And if you are watching and or listening and or doing both on YouTube, you can drop a comment down below. Don't forget to always hit that like. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps support the show. And if you don't like it, as usual, double click the thumbs down. Really tell YouTube how you feel about us. It goes a long way in putting us in our place. Um, so that being said, G, did I miss any of the mentions this week? Uh, I, I don't. I think you got everything. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention, so I, I couldn't tell you. I'll know in editing. Oh, oh, so you were pulling a plane guy. Yeah. I don't listen to you half the time, anyways, either. All well, that's actually, to be honest to with you, to me again. The whole on. thing that I was thinking about is my office looks a lot bigger now without that green screen behind me. Um, I realized without that green screen behind you that the uh, so anyone that's listening, G has the banner that we had at the toe show up behind him on his wall, but he never took off his green screen setting on his webcam, so our Spotify logo does not exist. <laughs> If you look back there on your screen, the Spotify <laughs> logo, which would be green, is completely gone. Uh, There's just a gap missing on it. So yeah, um, yeah. don't worry about fixing that on the fly. It's I'm not worried about it. Everyone's li listening there on Spotify. Go. There you go. We got the green Spotify logo back. If Spotify you zoom in real see. close, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, exactly. Spotify will probably sue us for having it. Um, so we had a question put out by a listener who sent us a message on the Facebook page. Um, we're going to kind of touch on it a bit. It was from Jonah. I know he doesn't mind his name. He was Jonah was the lucky winner at the tow show of our backball hitch. Yep. Um, he had a question about tow lights and, and talking about the legality of them. Uh, Jonah, I'm sorry. I don't know. We're going to look into it a little farther to see if there is something with that. I can't see. I've never heard of wireless tow lights or tow lights as a whole being illegal. There's obviously placement and things that you need to do. Yep. to make sure um, they're, you know, within a certain distance of the rear of the vehicle, visible at whatever distance, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about, G, with you is the different types of tow lights mm. and personally what kind, you know, uses and, and favorites, so to speak. Let's start with one and two, right? One and two are your standard light bars. You've got a heavy light bar and a light and a, a light duty light bar, let's call it, because one thing that I that bugs me and I see people using all the time, right? Number two is your 21-inch Tomate bar. They come in lime green. They come in all kinds of different colors. They're the same goddamn light bar. There's pink ones. There's blue ones. There's green ones. Yep. There's two wire transmitters for them. <laughs> That's three. the only thing they made. Oh, is there three now? Yep. There, there was, was a red green, green number two, which is a white wire. You, then you got green and red. Ah, okay. Okay, so they've gone to three different transmitting frequencies. So... Your standard Tomate light bar, this light duty light bar, number two, mm -hmm. is what I want to say 75% of 
wreckers who are using a wireless light bar are using. Right? I don't know what, like, as a bar, All I'm sure there's bars other... also carry one. It, and it's not a bad idea. And that's kind of something I wanted to talk about. Yeah. The problem is, especially when you get into these light, heavy duty or light, mid duty wreckers running that standard Tomate light bar. Yeah. Right. Tomate is going to love all the shout outs. The show is not endorsed nor sponsored by Tomate for the record. I think I've got three of their lights up here. Yeah. But that is what most of the mid, you know, light duty guys run. The problem is these guys start hooking up to cube trucks. Yep. And they're throwing that little 21 inch bar, single LED strip on the step. And you know, I, I think maybe that's where Jonah's question came into about the the legality of it. Like, is there a minimum size for size of vehicle? Yep. And it's something I'd like to look into. If you, if you do know at home, by all means, man, comment down below on YouTube. Send us a message. Find us on Facebook. Um, you guys, you know, what I mean, you need that bigger, that number one light bar that I call it a Tomate heavy duty. There's a wired and a wireless version of that. Right? Even the wireless can be wired too with the plug on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's a charging plug. Yeah, and then it can also be wired up to the truck. It's great. You store it in the toolbox. If we have one on our flatbed, it's stored in there. It's great for office trailers. Yep. It's great for cube trucks. It's great for anything. Yep. The problem and if is you're a light duty it, guy, to be it. honest with you, once you get this light bar, if it it's another thing to carry on your light duty truck, but Jeep Wranglers with the tire, those are good to wrap around on. Even some, some trailers with like a metal grate. I know I don't personally have a four way plug on the back. So you got the metal grate on a trailer. You slap that thing on with the bungee cords. I've used that a lot on light duty toes and it's handy to have. Well, here is my argument of all the lights. Like we're going to get into the other options because those are the two bars. Mm-hmm. We get into option three and four, which are wireless um, separate lights, right? Yeah. They're, they're two independent lights all controlled by the same transmitter. You're right. Number three is a Canadian tire I found. And the other four was, I think it was called Toe Bright. Toe Bright. Bright. That does sound familiar. That that sounds about right. These Toe Bright lights, and if you aren't watching on YouTube, you should go out and check them out. You know, check over and and see these things. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like them. You are right about the flimsy, but in my opinion, that exact model of light for a wireless version Mm-hmm. has the most versatility out of any light when it comes to light duty towing. I'm pretty sure that one actually had like a little block that you plugged into your cigarette lighter and it would ding if it got too far away from the Yeah, it was an car. anti anti loss uh yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah they yeah, came in a nice carrying lights. case as well and as long as you take care of them, they're pretty mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. The only problem is you drop them once and you're right that plastic handle that goes around. But we're seeing vehicles a lot more now, right? That are that aluminum Mm-hmm. right aluminum bed or bodies so magnets aren't sticking to yep. you've got um you know even tailgates used to be options with these anything with a chrome bumper you still have the option yep yeah yeah i never thought about the chrome bumpers and, and because see why i like that uh, that toe bright option four over those canadian tire ones and even over the the wired toe mate the wireless toe mate is yep. because they have the foot that swivels yep and so that you can put them on a bumper and tilt them up. We actually right. have an option to a Tomate straight bar with swivel feet underneath it for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But even that, try and do, okay, let's say you're doing that pickup truck. Yeah. And let's say that you're putting it on the back and the only option is the chrome bumper. Yeah, it's normally too wide and you don't get a good magnetic click. The so. gap where the license plate is, is too wide. So you can't put it that way and tilt it up. So your only option becomes because there's plastic on the top of the bumper. Your only option becomes on either side, yep. which is not, in my opinion, giving traffic an ideal, you know what I mean? Having kind of like these lazy jerks that you see out on the road that throw their two lights, tow lights together hmm. up on the roof. If they're using the wired ones or whatever, both on the left side, like six inches apart from each other. <laughs> and it's like, would you be a goddamn professional? And put the left, I, I think a lot of it is they don't know their left from their right. And so they, they don't have the understanding to which light goes on which side. They go, I just put them both here. Until you run into the uh, the left-handed cord or the right-handed cord, depending on what truck you go on, your signals are backwards anyways. 
yeah, yeah, we've had a couple problems with that with transmitters where tow lights would be our tow plugs be wired specifically yep. to that set of tow lights, yep. and it was wired wrong. Yep. And then you plug well, in another. I'm set, not sure like, if you knew what happened. The, the actual corded lights. It depends if the cord from the let's say the cord came out of the left light to the truck. That means it's a left-handed, like it's one way. But if it's the cord coming out of the right light, the signals are flipped. Right, because I know one of our old Ford flatbeds had the transmitter slot on the right. So then, if you plugged in like the actual tow mate light bar into it, yeah. it's backwards on the light. But if you plugged in the right handed <laughs> wired lights, you're good, right? Because the wired lights on, I didn't know that was actually a thing, and I feel like you're kind of messing with me. No, I'm not, it's legit. It makes sense because, yeah, you always go when I grab a set of tow lights, I go the wire that's feeding both is the left yep. light, right? But yep. I didn't know they made an option for the other side. Yep. The primary, I mean, you could wire that up. That's very simple to do. Yep. Um, But, okay, and it's because his tow light plug was on the passenger side of his truck. Yep, that's normally what it distinguishes by. Hmm. The more you know, plain guy learned something. I still think this is bullshit. If you think it is too, feel free to send us a message on Facebook or visit us at thetowinglife.ca and contact us. It's fine I don't believe, don't believe me. I don't believe this. Um, <laughs> but anyways, going back to those little tow brights, they are one of the most practical, in my opinion. Yep. Right? But again, you drop them once. We had them duct tape or electrical tapes. I remember we had all kinds of different things for the, them. The biggest downfall with those, I find to where the standard bar comes in ahead is if right. you are towing these aluminum Fords from the back, you can normally just put the actual bar right in the dash. And I know it's not three feet from the end of the vehicle, but can you really do that with the two separate ones and make sure that they stand upright and visible yes. through the window? Yes. I used to put them under the wipers. Oh yeah. I guess I works. used to put them under the wipers and just have the wiper sitting over on top of them yeah. and they would set up in that cowling or we talked about chrome bumpers. If there's one on the back, there's one on the front. Yeah. Put them on the front bumper. Yeah. Um, like I said, that's the only reason why those Canadian tire, I'd be curious to try those Canadian tire. They look fancy and simple. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious just what they're. You'd have to about. wire up a flat four though on your truck by the looks of it. I have, I'm pretty sure we have adapters for that normally okay. on the trucks, right? We have four, seven to four to four to four to three to two to one. Or four um, round four. Uh, no, we have seven. No, all you do is most trucks have a seven pin connector for your trailer brakes. Yeah. So you just buy those Canadian tire while you're buying your tow lights, buy your seven to four plug-in. Yep. No, but I'm uh, saying most of our tow trucks have the old Ford four pin, which is the round one. The old round four pin. Yeah. That is what yeah. most of the tow lights take. Um, I, and then, like you said, st number five, your standard wired tow lights. Um, how do you run your tow light wire? So I think you showed me this trick when you were training me it, with a little carabiner on the boom of your truck to hold excess line. I really like that. Love my carabiner. Um, and then from there, you'd run the cord. Well, you'd take your lights to the back of the car. You'd mm. grab the excess. And as you're walking back to the truck, you wrap it once or twice around the driver's side mirror. And then you yep. put it underneath the wiper blade. So then the cord stays at the front. And you don't have to worry about twisting and pulling and especially since you've got it hung up on your carabiner it's got height to it so you know it's not going to get caught the downfall to that is i don't know how many times i pulled a wiper arm up and the blade stays and now i have to explain to the customer that whoever put this in didn't clip it in properly <laughs> yep so yep. and then as soon as you get your lights set up like that someone says oh i need something and they just go and open the door and they rip the tow lights right off the car and potential mm -hmm. scratching their hood or trunk and well see and that's the problem with wired tow lights mm -hmm. like we we're in 2022 right we're not in the 1950s anymore and 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 the cost of these things are starting to go down um don't get me wrong they're they're not cheap they're You're still, still looking at 500 bucks to i think to get a standard tow mate flat light bar with transmitter well, even though those Canadian tire ones, I think I checked, were about $190 Canadian, which I was okay. really surprised by. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I can't speak for them. Yeah. Um, you know, I imagine they're not going to last the distance, the, the length that the Tomei light would last. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. Maybe I'll try one. Maybe that's our next project. Hey, Canadian tire, your tow lights are stupid. Send me <laughs> one. We'll break them down for you. Yeah, um, all you gotta I've do is seen... get on a product, and they'll send it to you. Apparently, 
I've never seen number six. So the Tomate individual, I guess their version of I have never seen those lights. I just happen to be Googling um tow lights or wireless tow lights, and I came across it. And uh intro it, it I mean, I think Tomate literally just had the wrong size bars they ordered. Hmm. And built well, it I into it. That one's also nice because it's got what looks to be like a side marker, which some of the higher end tow mate standard light bars have as well what purpose is that for i'm guessing it's because it's not to see as the operator see if it's still there it is for traffic lights so you have yeah. side markers if you're backing through a laneway or something like that you have a little bit of light shooting off the side would be my assumption yep um but yeah no but the, the corded ones it's it's yeah the risk of scratching the risk of everything all of these lights that anything that takes a magnet sits on the car or the suction cuffs that, that are available too, it is always important to remember to wipe them off. Yeah. Right. And as those rubber feet start to wear out and thin out and show the magnets underneath, replace it. Especially right? if you're carrying your tow light bar on the bed of your truck, you're picking up rust off the back of your truck. Who does that? You used to carry it on the boom. No, I didn't. On nice sunny days, you would stick it on the side of the boom. Oh, that's happened a couple of times. Yeah. That's on the boom, though, not on the flat surface of a bed where it's going to pick up all the oil. I'm not saying a flat bed. I'm saying on the wrecker, like in between where your spoons are. And normally, no, I kept it inside because I charged it in between calls. Yeah. I think you are mistaking me with some other guy. Probably. That makes sense. Um, But yeah, it's, you know, and losing them, right? Good yeah. trick I found for these for these tow lights not to lose them. Um, Apple Air Tags. If you don't want to buy those, Tile. There's all kinds of different mm-hmm. apps you can or little products you can buy on Amazon now that yeah. will literally go inside the light bar, mm-hmm. and you can set your phone to alert you whenever you get so far away from the light bar that it loses signal with it. Which is normally when you unhook and drive away and go, ah, oh, crap, I forgot my light bar. <laughs> um, there's, there's products like that that have the one I had. It was a cheap version. I think it was Tile, and it actually had a forgot your children in the back seat thing hmm. and uh so i don't understand how the transmitter but anyways it would send me a reminder say you forgot your kids or check <laughs> your you know what i mean check for your kids and i'm like i forgot my light bar again god damn it <laughs> there's nothing worse than driving away and having a mini Heart moment attack. of panic when you get like half an hour away going did i grab my light and you you reach down to feel it or you you yeah. look over your shoulder to see if it's I've had still to pull the- over and get out and check because I normally leave it on the back of my truck, right? And check. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's there because it's just we talk about, especially with new guys, is routine, routine, routine. When you get out of the truck, when you unhook your car, I normally say the fewer, le- like the less trips around, the casualty, the better because then you're working less. But it's also a good practice to get into as soon as you get out of the truck at dropping after you backed it into the spot, take a walk around, grab your tow light, make sure there's no damage done to the car, stone chips done while under transport, and then put that back in your truck and then start unhooking. Because if that's the first thing that you do every time, chances are a lot lower for for getting it somewhere. First thing on, first thing off, right? Throw it on right away so you don't forget it. Take it off right away so you don't forget it. Yeah. So, anyways, that's my rant and roll for uh, tow lights. <laughs> um, I think we all learned something today. Um, I, hope so. I hope so. Remember <laughs> to clean your booties, your rubber booties, clean your rubber booties, yeah. and watch the scratches and try out those Canadian tire lights. Or if you have, let me know how you like them. Yeah. Like, I don't know. We all we always talk about the commercial grade and as good as we can get for all our products, but I've had some pretty shitty tow lights before. And they and they and they towed. Yeah. And they let they lit your toe. Yeah. Like lit your toe. They they, they do their job. You plug them in, the battery life might not be great on them, but you just right. keep plugging them in. I've had cheap Chinese knockoff ones of the standard Tomate light bar with like four different LED modules and that worked out all right. Other than the magnets, we put better magnets on it. And right. to be honest with you, upgrade your magnets on your Tomate light bars. It'll be the best thing you ever do. There's an upgraded magnet kit? That you oh yes, or... there is a nice strong magnet. You'll never lose a set going down the road again. 
Ooh, that might be what's on ours right now because I find you really got hurt. Yeah, it's a big puck, off. not the little puck, the big. I don't know, it's a little puck, but this thing for some reason I feel like I really got to reef it off there. You're just weak. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe in all my slacking, I've just yeah. lost my my inner strength. You've become too much strength. of an armchair tower. <laughs> this is the guy who is in captivity and works three days a week. Oh, I work more than three days a week. That's up for debate. And by debate. I'm still classified as full time and get benefits and everything at work. So there you go. No one else's opinion matters. Exactly. Your opinion doesn't matter. That's me saying it. So (laughs) bugger off. (laughs) Towing is a career full of different situations from vehicles missing a wheel to having none at all. A great operator learns to use all the tools in both his physical and mental toolbox. I'm here today to tell you about a new tool for your physical toolbox, the back pole hitch. I'll be the first to tell you I had my doubts, doubts that I personally aired on this podcast. But the fine folks over at Back Pole Hitch sent me a product to test and to use, and boy was I surprised. From the quality of the build and how easy it was to use, I was surprised. And it made me eat my words real fast. So if you're a doubter like me, head on over to backpolehitches.com, that's B A K. P-U-L hitches.com and add another valuable tool to your toolbox. You won't regret it. All right. So let's take that good laugh about tow, uh, tow hooks or tow hooks, tow lights and how you're a slacker and get a little bit more into a little bit darker, a little bit twisted more times. Cause why not? Um, <laughs> you had this point brought up and so I'm going to kind of go against my better judgment, let you lead it. Um, oh boy. Fatal wrecks, right? God knows we see them. God knows they mess us up. Mm-hmm. But you want to talk about the lingering effect of these fatal wrecks. And I'm not 100% sure what you mean by it. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to explain to me what you mean by it. So a couple of different things. Like, I'm not sure. For me personally, I've got a pretty... I would say a pretty good open relationship with the girlfriend here. And we try to talk about things back and forth. She enjoys coming towing with me and stuff like that. Well, I did a fatal one day and she was with me. Not a big deal. You stay in the truck. Don't look at it. Right. Well, the body was still there and the crash investigators van was blocking it. And I actually had to run back and get another truck instead of a tow truck for all the debris because there was a lot of debris. It was a head on, on a bend. It wasn't a pretty scene. So when we get there, I show up in the black unmarked truck that we have and the crack or the accident guy leaves. He just leaves and then kind of leaves the body. Just it's tarped up, but it's sitting down there on the shoulder. And even though that you're not, you know, you shouldn't look, you always look. Oh, right. it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Your body just luck. wants you to look, even though you know what you're going to see is exactly. going to mess with you. And so I'm we're, I'm sweeping and I'm throwing everything in the bed of the truck and I'm helping the other guys load. And I get out one of the buckets of kitty litter and I'm spreading kitty litter all over all this fluid. And this fluid has gone right down to the tarp that's covering up Buddy down there in the ditch. And I'm not thinking like... Should I, I want to get it close because when the coroner shows up, I don't want them slipping and falling, but I don't want to cover this guy and absorb all either, right? So I do the best I can. And so we get everything all cleaned up and we got to wait around until the body gets picked up so we can take pictures of the accident scene to prove what we did, the amount of cleanup, the amount of product that we put down, right, for the billing purposes and stuff like that. So then the coroner finally comes out, two very small women get out one's like five two probably like 110 pounds and they struggle to get this larger gentleman onto the gurney and of course the girlfriend watches us well we all watch it because that's the only movement on scene right yeah that's the entertainment it is the entertainment unfortunately and they get them all loaded up in the back we take our pictures and we take off i didn't really think too much of it the girlfriend was a little upset that i just left her there and it's like well you could have got out well no you were just standing there. It's like we're talking to the new sergeant, actually, for our what area. Do you, she was mad you left her where? In my pickup, facing the opposite where? way from the wreck. Well, where else is she supposed to be? Exactly. 
you're you're not an employee. Get your ass back in the truck and and you know, I'd tell that to my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Like she always stays in the truck on everything that we do. She's not one to get out, right? So she stays there. Anyways. And I I noticed that it bothered her a little bit more than what I would just come home and tell her these stories, right? right? Because I've got a very open relationship with her in the first place. And it bothered her on a more deep level, I guess, because she was there and she actually saw it. And that's not something I actually thought about. Like I knew it would bugger me up a little bit because it always weighs heavy on you for the first couple of days or maybe a week. Once you get used to it, I know if your first one can, depending on how severe it is, can linger a lot longer, but I never thought about how it might infect the people in my life. Right. Just telling them stories. Yeah. They, they might think about it and be like, Oh, that's horrible. And then move on the next day, but not like a lingering effect. Well, Okay, so I didn't know that's where you wanted to go with it. This is where I'm going to have some strong opinions. Um, she shouldn't be there. I don't care if she's in the truck or not. She shouldn't be there. Were you aware when you were dispatched that it was a fatal? It was actually a very or a weird severe, or a severe collision. It was a very weird scenario about how we stumbled upon it. I'll tell you later in private. You okay? But you were you were dispatched to this call. Right, no. like you were heading out to this call, knowing what it was. Yes. Okay. She shouldn't have been with you. Yeah. Because it is, you know, and this is, and this is nothing personal against you. This is, in my opinion, about you're right. Right. We see this stuff, and it weighs on us, and and we share it with our partners. Um, I am terrible for not telling my wife. <laughs> um, some of the bad things are not wanting to tell them because I know that she is going to take it personally, even by me telling her. She will, it'll, you know, it might not weigh on her, but it'll make her sad. Yeah. Right. Like I, I did a, a wreck the other day. Not even a, I don't even want to call this a wreck. <laughs> we have a policy at our company that anytime that there is a fatal um, collision um, that a supervisor has to attend. Yeah. And what this was put in place for was some of these fatal scenes can be very chaotic. Yeah. There's lots going on. We've had two where we had two fatals at the same time. Or an hour apart from each other. There was all kinds of confusion, all kinds of chaos. The police report had the wrong vehicle on it. Mm. My operator had the wrong vehicle on it. It made for a nightmare of confusion, yep. right? So we in introduced a policy that a supervisor attends fatal accidents. Yep. Um, and and the supervisor's job at that point is to um, pretty much get the vehicle information, get all that sorted out with the police. Is this going? Is this something that's going to an ident? Is this yep. something that's going to indoor storage? Is this something that's going to outdoor storage? What is your exact wishes? And that, you know, I don't have to worry about doing the recovery side of it. Yep. We've got operators care. that it's it's making sure you've got all the coordination set up right with the police to avoid any confusion or any problems. Yep. Um, I think it's a great system. It seems to be working fairly well. Yep. So we go with it. So we get a call. I had a, a call the other night. I had just gotten back to my trip over the weekend. I think it was it was after we recorded. I believe we recorded that night. Yeah. I get a call and I've got a fatal at a uh, commercial parking lot. Mm. You probably heard about it. I'm like, no, I've I've been gone, right? Like I haven't I got a fly in here. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, um, you know, I didn't really know about it. So I'm like, okay, gives me the address kit. Uh, this is your truck that's attending kit. Perfect. I'm on my way. So I show up before my truck gets there. And yeah. this incident was that a, um, it's very sad and very tragic, and and I don't think any of the family or anyone's obviously going to be listening, but at the same time, if they are, I pass on my condolences. It was a two-year-old child that was at the grocery store. His parents went big grocery shopping. They, were, they had a couple kids, I think, with them. They were unloading the groceries into the car. Little two-year-old boy, just curious, whatever, decides to dart out a 2,500 pickup truck. Hits him. Mm. Hits him. Rent what drove over top of them and, and this yeah. is where it gets dark and and i don't mean to make it sound as simple i know it's a terrible tragedy but that is one thing any operator listening will understand that this is just how you deal with it yep so the 2500 truck hit him and and the child died and when we well, by the time we arrived on scene the body had been moved there was really no damage to the truck as you can imagine a truck you know versus like a truck, pedestrian yeah. of that size there's not yeah there's no damage mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is that it sat heavy with me for a couple days yep. and it kept playing through my head. I couldn't imagine the mother turning around mm. to see that happening. 
the, the, the I don't know who was driving the truck, whether it's a young kid, older person, whatever it was. And and there's no criminal investigation by looks into this. It was one of those fluke crazy accidents. Yeah. But you just like that you, you can't imagine the pain they're going through. Mm. And that's what sat with me. And that's what really put me in a mood I found for multiple days. Yep. And it was, you know, and, and that's no body, no whatever. And that's just because it's a tragedy. I'm sure people watch that on the news and, and feel that heavy heart. Yep. The moral of the story is, is I knew that I was going to a fatal. I did not know of what sort. I did not know of what degree. I did not know if there was going to be bodies of blood. And there is not a chance in hell you would ever find my wife riding with me in that truck yep. to those scenes. It is unfortunate what we have to see in the industry. There is no reason. If you want to expose the ones you love to it in a sense of support and, and having that network around you, because let's be honest, sometimes you need people to talk to, right? There should always be people to talk to if these things are bothering you. But to willingly bring her to that scene, whether you park your truck backwards or which way or another, I think it was a gross misconduct on your part and a terrible fucking idea yeah. because you know that we, we shouldn't have to see this just because we see it and it becomes normal to us. Do not introduce that to the general public or to someone that you love to have to make them have that with them too. It's bad enough that she's going to have to deal with your cranky ass because <laughs> God knows you're no, but you, let's be yeah. honest when, when you deal with a shit, you tend to have some emotions and, you can be cranky. Everyone deals with it differently. It's bad enough yep. she's going to have to deal with that. Now you've willingly put her in a place where she's got to emotionally deal with it. I asked her if she wanted to come. I don't care. And she knew what we were going to. She said, Trust Unless me. she's on my payroll, she's not there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I get what you did. And in your small town, too, it's, it's, it's different. I get it. I'm not. But... I mean, man, I knowing that you're going to, it's one thing, hey, the girlfriend came with me for the rides and oh shit, we got this emergency call. We showed up. Yeah. It's unfortunate, yeah. right? That is something they know when they get in the truck. I don't know when I'm getting out and I don't know what I'm going to, mm. but to willingly have, in, have invited her to that in, in a sense, invited so, her. There, I there's a little point. bit more to the story that I also want to touch on. My my one rookie, the youngest guy working now, at my company, he arrived. I'm sorry? Now he's defending his decision. No, this is co completely different. It's just involving the Fair same enough. scene. My Fair rookie enough. was first on scene, pretty much. The accident happened right in front of two cruisers and a tow truck. So he got there, and he went running over as the police officers were pulling him out and doing CPR. And he had to go do something. And so he left. Meanwhile, he knew it was going to be a while. He called me freaking out and he was like, I just watched someone die. I just watched him die. Like, it's a bad wreck. I was like, yeah, that'll fuck with you. That'll yeah. linger with you. Yeah. And then I found Not out. Right from the cop, yeah. I found out with, from the cop later. And just as I was saying goodbye to him later that night, I said, oh, yeah, don't worry. You didn't see him die. die. He was dead on impact. Don't worry. No. <laughs> Just to make him feel a little bit so, better and get a chuckle out of him, right? He was a witness to the crash, and he just said, like, I got another call to do. See ya? Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Well, oh, it it was a little different. Like, we knew we were going to get it. It was contracted anyways. So, yeah. I love small towns. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I know. It, it's, yeah, it's, I just, like, that's my reaction to the story I shared back when about the transport that almost hit me. Yeah. Right, where he ripped a you know his whole passenger side of his truck off on the trailer. I my first instinct as I went to the U turn turn around was I just watched someone die. Yeah, like that's the first thing that crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, in that moment, didn't bother me one bit. No, but the best way if you are going through this is if you're going to a wreck, don't get involved. Get the name, get the RO if they give you a slip. Oh, don't yeah. read it. Don't don't look into it. Don't follow the news. Don't follow the court case. Don't just stay as far away from it as you can. At the end of the day, you're here to do a job, and your job is that car. You pick yep. up that car and you move it. Yep. As little yep. interaction with anyone else, anyone who's a part of it, you hand out a business card to whoever's there who needs one, and you get your job done. You get in and you get out. That's yep. the best you are thing there. to do. You're there to do a job. No, absolutely right. And don't, for the love of God, 
do not involve your loved ones. In <laughs> so, um, on a lighter note, because let's get away from all this death and. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get to. I, I'm I'm sure there's some of you that have seen this video. It has been mm-hmm. all over social media, and we are going to break it down um, because the stupidity. There's got to be something to this that we it don't make sense. There's something to this video, and I'll pull. Uh, doo, doo, doo. There has got to be something to this video that we don't know. So, lay it out if you haven't seen it on social media. It's a train, or sorry, a truck, a flatbed truck, a little 550, whatever it is, loading up a... Is that a Ford? Chevy, 1500 by the looks of it. Okay, yeah, it's the video quality is not the greatest. Okay. Loading up a pickup truck, but this guy has parked his tow truck across train tracks yep. to load this truck backwards, or frontwards. Pick- the casualty isn't across the tracks. No, no, no. The casualty is off the track. Eh, it might be close to the first rail, but it looks to be off the tracks. The tow truck is dead center. Well, of all the, the truck rail. would not have been. The truck's halfway up the deck, and it's still, when you watch this video, the train okay. doesn't even touch the casualty. So, anyways, we'll, we'll play the video with the news report. You can hear their audio. YouTube, if you cancel us for it or quiet it, whatever it happens. Well, Welburn Road at South Dally Road. You'll see in the video the operator jumping out of the tow truck just 10 seconds before the train hit. College Station Police say the rollback record was parked on the tracks while hooking up another vehicle that was involved in a separate crash. That's when the northbound train slammed into the tow truck. Good news is nobody was injured. Union Pacific reps were out there at the crash site Saturday repairing the gate and the light. Okay, so for the record, he makes it sound really enthusiastic where he says that just 10 seconds ahead of time. In all fairness, 10 seconds is a long time in that case. Like, by the time it took him to explain all that, it was 10 seconds. So, yeah. add a little drama to it. But, I mean, 10 seconds is still not that long. You don't right? even see the operator jumping out of the truck in this way. <laughs> exactly, from the time they were on the cameras. So, I, before I take my time to shit on the operator... Hmm. I think I figured out why he's doing what he's doing. I think there might be two reasons why he's doing what he's doing. Neither of them justify the amount of risk he put himself in. Hmm. First, I would like to account for the police on scene. Mm -hmm. Because that police cruiser looks like it's sitting there. I don't know if this is the operator off to the side or if this is the... the, uh, Actually, you can see my mouse. (laughs) I don't know if it's this guy that's standing right here that's the operator of the police, the guy involved in the accident. I don't know who he is or if, you know. But, I I mean, I've responded to plenty of officers looking for people on the train tracks, accidents near the train tracks, all that. And, like, the first thing the the police do, they're very adamant about contacting the rail company and ensuring that there is no trains coming through. And if there is, clear the tracks because... You know what I mean? With with normally five minutes, ten minutes notice. Yep. Right. Or they get the train to stop if it's exactly yeah. right because they're normally can. far enough out that you can you can plan this stuff and and they can do that. So I don't understand why that accident was allowed to happen. I'm sure there's going to be an investigation into it. Yeah. This guy probably is like, I have to load this pickup truck forwards because my truck is too light in the front. And if that's, I load it backwards, the front end will come off the ground. That was my thought. Yeah. Right? He is he has put himself across the track so that he can load this vehicle frontwards because it's a 1500 on a little 550. And it could be a 2500 Chevy, if that's what you're saying. Body styles, they look very much similar. <laughs> Do a wheelie and move that thing away from the tracks before loading it. Yeah. Like, that is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You have the police there. He can close off the road, push the thing 40 feet away. Winch it, Winch it sideways on yeah. a 90 degree yeah. away from the tracks. Yeah. Like there is so many. This is a, I believe this is a, like, I feel this is a perfect example of complacency. Yeah. I'm going to park here. I'll be fine. I've crossed these happened. tracks. I don't know how many times and I've never, never seen a train. a train come by. Yeah, exactly. I, I, because, it's either complacency or complete stupidity. And so I'd like to give the operator the benefit of the doubt and say that it's stupid. And sorry, that it's complacency. Because even if you're complacent, you're still kind of stupid, but not as stupid as parking your tow truck 
across the tracks. Yeah. You are correct when you're saying I seen when the train hits it. Yeah, that train wasn't like that train was nowhere near the tracks that you know, especially if he's got it halfway yeah. on his bed. Yeah, that it had to be. So I, I don't know. Is there a wheel maybe missing on the passenger side? You can't. It see? looks like it's sitting pretty upright. It does. I don't care if a wheel's missing. Drag it. Yeah. I mean, that truck probably isn't the greatest for doing any kind of weird dragging, winching recovery. That's what I hate about those little trucks, depending on the vet bed that's on them. Yeah. But like any option. Uh, listen, this guy, I would approve a J hook as a snatch block. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> you know why? Because a winch line would be a lot cheaper than that truck's going to be to replace. Yeah. And a winch line taking that guy's head off is less likely than him getting hit by a train. Yep. <laughs> so yep. I hope I hope the operator listens to this. We're big, we're we're got a good listenership in the state. If you know the operator, have him reach out to us because we would like to have a sit down conversation. What was going through your head? Yeah. Prior to this incident happening. I hope this isn't some rookie driver that just didn't have proper training. Please but, tell me the police officer directed you to put your truck where it was so you're not yeah. fully to blame. Yeah, please tell me the cop said that you need to park here. Yeah. I really hope it's not a new operator that wasn't properly trained. But I mean, how far? You, you have a driver's me. license, and to get the driver's yeah. license, they always say you got to look both ways and you don't park across those tracks and make sure you leave enough clearance for the gates to come down and exactly like so even if it is poor training i mean there's still got to be some like accountability on the stupidity of the operator yeah like <laughs> that train just doesn't oh, the train's not going to think about that no now he's probably caused extra damage to the pickup truck i love the pickup truck literally just drops off it yeah he had the gate yeah. slamming into the side of it but other than yeah. that the truck got out unscathed yeah. It's got Who knows? Maybe bottle. it was the starter that gave out and that jostle got the truck started again. Buddy could drive it away. Who knows? <laughs> but like just putting I yourself your truck, in, putting yourself in that kind of position is absolutely baffling. I don't understand it. And like I said, even if it's if it's bad training, no, you should probably retire out of towing. If those are the decisions that you were gonna make behind the wheel of a tow truck. I would maybe consider that McDonald's might be a better option. That's my two cents. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Towing's just not for you. I don't Thinking's think. Thinking's hard. <laughs> so on that note, gee, I think definitely has a fun got to touch on the, some things learned about a left-handed and a right-handed tow light. Um. Yeah. Where, where not to park your truck. And for the love of God, don't bring family members to fatals. On that note, thank you all for listening. Thanks for coming out. Don't forget to reach out to us over on YouTube, over on Facebook, at the website, www.towinglife.ca. We will see you again next week. Take care. Toodles. That was a really delayed doodles. Yeah, I've got bad connection right now.